In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how you should be color grading in Final Cut Pro with no plugins whatsoever. Now, I'm gonna be breaking down how I would do it, why I recommend the way I do it, and just to show you guys kind of a couple of my workflows and how to speed up your own process. So without further ado, let's dive right into Final Cut. I have selected five clips right here, and you can actually follow along and download all the clips that I'm color grading in the link in the description. Now I am going to be using some of my own LUTs and I'm using some LUTs that I also purchased like Phantom LUTs, but you can use just the standard Vlog LUTs and you get pretty close to what I'm getting. It's just a preference on whenever I'm using it. I'm going to set up something sort of similar in DaVinci Resolve called a node tree, but this is just how you should color grade in any of your things. Now you can do it one of two ways. The first way being you add an adjustment layer and put all your color grading on that. But for this reference, I'm just gonna be color grading straight on to the clip itself. And if you do wanna add any final look or anything like that, adding an added lot at the end, you can put it on this and then have a final lot that is on all of your clips. But for this example, I'm just gonna be color grading these clips individually. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I will start going into my color corrections. But before I start adding anything, I wanna show you guys how I build my little color tree or node tree that's similar in DaVinci Resolve, but I'm doing it in Final Cut Pro. So actually the first thing I like adding, I don't use it all the time in my color boards, but is just my color board for exposure levels. You can use your color wheels, but I'll explain sort of why I like having my exposure be first on the color board, but Again, I'll get into that a little bit. Then I like having my color wheels. My color curves will be the third thing. Then after all of that, I'm gonna add my custom LUT, which will go straight onto this. And then I'm gonna add my hue versus saturation curves. So the first four things is specifically just for color correction purposes. And then the next few ones are just gonna be for grading. So. If I'm gonna do any grading or color shifting, I'll you either use hue versus saturation curves, or I would add a second color wheels. And then lastly, I would add a third uh, LUT. This is more of a custom look LUT. So personally, I'm using my Danu teal in orange LUTs. I'll turn that off for right now, but when it's on, I'm only using it at 30%. Now, before we get into the actual color grading process itself, what's actually really a nice about once you set up all of this stuff, you can go to this button right here, save effect preset, turn off all of this stuff, anything like that, and then just go into your effects, make sure only the effects are saved. And then you can name this uh, default color. You can name this default color or color grade or you can call it a specific camera. So this is the S5 2X, and then you can pit where you wanna save it. So I have Matthew Daniel effects and then pit save. What's really cool about once you save your effect preset, go into wherever you saved it, right click it, and then make a default video effect. After you did that, you can on top of your videos, this will be your first effect. So you can simply drag and drop onto your next clips and it'll be instantly added to them. Or once you have it as your default effect, what's really cool is once it's a default video effect, you can go up to any of your clips and instead of just dragging and dropping it like I had did, you can just hit simply option E and then it will add all your effects to the clip. So just option E, add your effects, option E, it adds your effects, option E, it adds your effects. And it's really, really simple. So let's get into actually color grading our clips now. I am gonna be using the Phantom LUTs. I really, really love these LUTs and highly, highly recommend getting them if you shoot on Panasonic cameras. But if you're just shooting on a different camera, you can use whatever converging LUT you use. Now, for starters, I already noticed that my highlights are not gonna be completely high, so I can start bringing those up just to kind of bring my overall contrast of this image and then bring my shadows down. Now, the reason I really like using color boards first is I felt like it kind of gives me a better contrast to the image than just using the color wheels, but I do still go into the color wheels and do just very slight fine adjustments in here, going to my shadows, my midtones, and then my highlights. Now, something I do just to kind of do a quick fix, especially on the Phantom LUTs since they can be a little bit warm sometimes, 
is I will bring down the warmness and make it a little bit cooler. And then sometimes I like adding a little green to my image. This is kind of all a little bit of a personal taste and opinion on this. Now, something I noticed when making my color adjustments, I went over here and turned on my skin indicator tone line and I noticed right away that my actual skin tone of this line is pretty accurate but if we will fix it in a little bit lastly before for fixing color correction I just go into my curves I add the slightest bit of an s curve to the image here's the process of what I've done so far I add my LUT to rec 709 to convert my log footage added a little bit of adjustments on the color boards turn on my wheels a little bit and then added a little bit of curves and then I would typically in here, if I'm not doing any very specific grades to it, and I'm just generally color grading overall, this is where I'll just make sure my skin tone looks perfect. So the first thing I do sometimes is I'll go right here and try to grab just the skin so I can see my skin and I'll hit view mask. So this right here will show me my skin tones. So if I bring this more to the line, click off the view mask, and then that makes the skin look a lot better. But I do want to affect the entire image, not just whatever mask I created. So I'll hit delete mask to get rid of it. And now I notice this is all way, way too pink. So I'm going to bring that just down again, just a little bit. And now that skin tone looks a little bit more natural. The last thing I would do is add a custom LUT. And again, I keep it typically at 30%. And something I did notice adding this custom lot is it made it a little bit too pink. So boom, just get rid of that. I'm not even using the hue versus saturation curves in this. So we added our conversion lot to rec 709. We went to color boards, color wheels to kind of make some adjustments, curves, and then added a custom lot. And this is the before, and this is the after. Honestly, this process of grading, I've gotten down really, really fast. Now moving on to the next few clips, I'm gonna be grading these a lot faster just so you guys can see how fast the process is. So if you already did it, you can either go into your video effects or if you saved it, option E, and it's gonna instantly pit your color grading board and everything on it. We're gonna go into boards. We're gonna bring down our contrast, bring down our midtones, and bring up our highlights ever so slightly. Go into our wheels. Kind of do a similar process just to kind of bring a little bit more contrast to this image and i kind of like how the highlights bloom in this image um, i do think it's a way too warm but i think that's how i shot it specifically that that so far looks really good something i'm going to try to play with is if i bring some more blues in the shadows what that will do to the, to the image shadow low down we're going to go into curves add just a slight little bit more of contrast maybe i'm going to pop up his mid-tones just a tad bit we're going to kind of go into our hue versus saturation now one thing i want to do on this image specifically is i want to see if i can bring this grass to be just maybe slightly greener or you can make it slightly oranger and kind of give more of a sunset vibe but since we're kind of shooting a higher day i'm going to see if i can just green out this image just a little bit a little bit more green and make the grass feel a little bit more vibrant and i'm going to add a hue versus sat and then i'm going to bring up that saturation just ever so slightly and then the last thing is danu teal and orange it's one of my favorite custom luts just throw that on the image and i'm going to bring that down just a little bit and then this is the before and the after so this was some shot I did for the Lumix competition show that should be coming out pretty shortly. Boom, option E, we're gonna throw on our LUTs and everything. Now instantly, I already noticed that this is way too dark. So I'm gonna start by bringing up my highlights and bringing up my midtones because I don't wanna bring up my shadows. The reason being is I start losing that contrast. If I reset this and bring those up first, you can just see it starts becoming more of a grayer image and that's not what I'm going for. So I'm gonna bring up my midtones and highlights to kind of bring the image back to a normal starting place we're going to go into our color wheels i'm going to bring my shadows just a little bit more down still going to bring those highlights a little bit up the reason i'm bringing my highlights and midtones in this image specifically up more is i can bring my shadows down later on and give that image just a little bit more contrast overall last thing is i'm going to go into my curves add the slightest bit of curves 
And I'm gonna kind of go back to my color wheels and see if I can work on any of the adjustments. The color actually looks pretty good, but I'm gonna just warm up the image very, very slightly. I might just only add it to the highlights and then bring some shadows and bring some pinks into the midtones. Now, the last thing is I'm not gonna really mess with any of this because the color out of Lumix cameras looks so good. And my Danube teal and orange LUT is already on. So boom, this is the before of the image and here is the after. Option E, honestly, this is why I love shooting on Lumix cameras. It looks honestly so good, so fast. We're gonna bring down our shadows. We wanna make sure we don't pass this line or pass this line because that means our shadows are getting crushed or our highlights are getting crushed. The exposure looked honestly really, really good on this day specifically, but I'm gonna see if I can bring just a little bit more contrast to the image and just a tad bit more warm, go into my curves, add a quick curve adjustment. Maybe I wanna bring up his skin just ever so slightly. Hue versus sat, just to make sure his skin tones are right. Yeah, skin tones kind of look good right there. If I wanna double check it, I can add a color mask really quick. Color mask, just his skin as much as possible. View mask, and then I can see his skin is on the line right there. This might get changed though, it, once I add my final LUT, before and the after. And that, that looks like so good right there. All right, next clip, option E turn off my LUT so I don't mess up with my colors. Go to my boards, gonna bring those shadows very slightly down, middle, mids, so I'm gonna bring down and then highlights, I'm gonna bring just a little bit up. Gonna go to my color wheels, sort of a similar process, just adding as much contrast to the image as possible. It's a little bit warm for my taste, so I'm gonna bring it just very slightly down and it's a little bit pink, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more green into the image. Just adding a quick, tiny contrast on the saturation and bring up my mid-tone area a little bit more. This, I'm not gonna mess with because it's just like, I don't want to like overexpose the skin or underexpose it. So I typically do my S curve on the bottom half of this curve right here, once if everything is mostly exposed. The image overall is kind of close to the look that I want to go for. And then lastly, just adding my Danube teal and orange look and it kind of gives it that nice teal and orange look. And here's the before and the after. It's really, really simple. All right, last shot right here, option E. Now right away, I noticed this image is way too like pink and orange. So we're gonna fix that in a second, but we're gonna fix our exposures really quickly go to our color wheels, fix our exposures right here the exact same way. And then lastly, we're gonna fix those colors. So, ooh, this is a little bit more tricky. I wanna add a little bit more green into the image, but not much, so maybe minus three. And if I do that, that looks pretty good. And then bring my shadows a little bit more down. Now that overall looks a lot better, but what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna go back into my board, go to my color, and this is where I can kind of more fine tune things a little bit more, and this is what I kind of like about the color boards. Even though it's not a professional speaking tool, you're just able to get a little bit more fine tuning than I feel with the color wheels. Nextly, we're gonna go into our hue versus sat. My greens as much as possible in this image. There you go. I want those to just be a little bit more green, not by much. I also want to make this saturation a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna bring this a little bit down because this dirt is just a little bit too extreme for me. So I'm gonna bring that just a tad bit down. And the last thing is just that Danube teal and orange look. So here's the before and the after. So I hope this video was helpful to teach you how to color grade in Final Cut Pro. If you're interested in learning how to color grade in DaVinci Resolve, you can check out that video right here. And then YouTube recommends you might like this video right here. Till next week, guys. Peace.